Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 3, Part 5. Welcome to Part 5. In this part, we are going to learn about two training methods. Training methods are methods that can be employed to actually change the weights in a neural network. We are going to examine Hebb's Rule and the Delta Rule. Both of these training methods can be used in a variety of situations. The delta rule actually founds the foundation for the backpropagation technique that we will learn about in the next class session. Hebb's rule is basically a reinforcement training method. Whatever the neural network has already learned, applying Hebb's rule is going to reinforce what the neural network already knows. The delta rule, which as I said before, forms the foundation for backpropagation, allows you to basically calculate an error and train the neural network for a specific pattern that you wanted it to recognize. This is used most commonly in supervised training. We will begin by looking at Hebb's rule. We will begin by looking at Hebb's rule. Hebb's rule is an example of a simple unsupervised training method. It basically reinforces what is already there, what is already learned by the neural network. We begin by looking at the equation that represents Hebb's rule. Here you see the Hebb's rule equation. On the left of the equation, you have the delta that is going to be necessary for the weight between neuron i and neuron j. Then you see that the weight change is going to be equal to the mu, which is the learning rate, of the input, which is a sub i, by the output, which is a sub j. So basically, you're multiplying the input by the output between these two neurons to determine the weight change that is going to be applied to them. This will reinforce whatever the output for the given input is between these, new, these two neurons. This is a form of unsupervised training. Now we're going to take a look at how this would be implemented in actual code. Here you see the code necessary to implement Hebb's rule. A function named learning rule is provided that accepts three inputs. The rate, the learning rate, which is the mu variable from before, the input, and the output. The implementation is very simple. The rate is multiplied by the input by the output. This will return the delta that is necessary over the weights between the input and the output. Now let's look at a couple of examples to see how Hebb's rule would be applied. In case one, we have a neuron i value, which is the input, of plus 1. The output is minus 1. Therefore, Hebb's rule, and all three of these assume a learning rate of 1, is going to be 1 times 1 times negative 1. The weight delta will be negative 1. That is, the weight will be decreased by 1. This will reinforce the negative 1 output when a positive 1 is presented to this, to this neuron. Case 2 works similarly as does case 3. We're just seeing different i values and different j values that Hebb's rule can be applied to. Each of these will produce a different change to the weight matrix as expressed by the weight delta. We're about to run a console application that demonstrates using the Java code that we just looked at that, the, that implements the Hebb's rule. Here we see the output from it. You can see that there's four patterns that we're presenting on each epoch. You can see epoch 5 and part of epoch 4. Look at epoch 5. You'll see that for the two middle patterns presented, the result was 512 and 256. If you look at the previous epoch, it was negative 64 and 128. You can see that Hebb's rule is basically reinforcing the result on those two, and it's also reinforcing the zero. It's actually not affecting the zero result on the first and last result. Next, we will look at the delta rule. 
the delta rule is used for supervised training. The delta rule works by exploring the differences between the anticipated output and the actual output for the given input. This allows the weights to be adjusted for the specified input to produce output that is more in line with what we expected. We will begin by looking at the equation that is used for the delta rule. And here you see the delta rule equation. The left side of the equation, delta w between i and j, represents the change that is necessary between neuron i and neuron j, the input and the output, uh, to affect this learning. This is the same as the way that the result is returned from Hebb's rule. Then we multiply 2 times mu, which is the learning rate, times the input for the particular neuron that we're currently looking at, which is i, times the ideal output minus the actual output for neuron j. You can see that this is a supervised training algorithm because we are actually taking into account the actual output and the ideal output, whereas with unsupervised, there was no concept of ideal output. This is a Java implementation of the delta rule. We are taking the learning rate, the input, the ideal, and the actual values as inputs. Here we simply express the equation that we just saw by multiplying the rate times the input times the the um, difference between the actual and ideal values. You'll notice the constant 2 is not expressed here. The constant 2 could be, although it is often built into the learning rate, as it is simply multiplied by the learning rate. It depends on which implementation of the delta rule you're actually looking at. We will now see an example that makes use of this training function and applies the delta rule to some inputs and expected outputs. We're now going to run an example that makes use of the delta rule. We're going to present four different patterns along with anticipated results. Here you see the four patterns that were ran. We've run 100 epochs, as you can see there, by beginning epoch 100. This has pretty thoroughly trained the weight matrix for our anticipated outputs. You can see the anticipated output for the four input patterns. Basically, we want a 1 on the final of the four, but we want a 0 on the first three. You can see the actual values. The actual values are shown at the right. You have negative 0 0.33 and 0 0.33 for the ones where we are anticipating a 0 and we have a 0.66 for the one where we're anticipating a 1. This may seem like the training has failed, but the values are actually converging to the values we expect. The 1 has a value that it's getting bigger than the zeros. For them to truly converge on the values that we're anticipating, we would need more weights in the matrix. We're going to learn about this in the next chapter. This concludes class three for Introduction to Neural Networks for Java. In the next class session, we will learn about the feedforward backpropagation neural network. This is one of the most common forms of neural networks used. The backpropagation technique that is used to train the feedforward neural network is actually an extension of the delta rule that we learned about in this class session. We hope you will continue with class session four. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.